about how many squares you think are in the border that I... The border problem is another activity for which there's more than one way to reach a solution. It integrates arithmetic, geometry, and algebra. Each student has a 10 by 10 grid. They're asked to figure out, with their groups, how many squares there are around the border. 16 plus 16 plus 20. What I'm interested in is hearing from several of you about how many squares are around the border and, more importantly, how you figured that out. I want to see how many different ways we can find for figuring the border of the square out. We got um, 36 because there's like 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom, and take out the two corners, it's 8 on the sides. So it's 20 plus 16 it equals 36. Jimmy had the top and the bottom, which was 10 each, and got 20 and then took away the corners and add the two sides. And when you add those two together, got an answer of 36. Did somebody have a different way for figuring out the border that they could describe? There's eight on each one, eight on the side and eight on the other side, and we did eight times eight, which was 64. And what does 64 tell you? That is 64 inside the middle. That's true, 64 inside the middle, and my question is, how much is outside the border? Oh. Can you oh. use that information about 64 to figure out how much is outside the border? Yeah, it's just subtracted, which gives you 64, around 40, 40, 42. And what are you subtracting 64 from? 100. And why are you subtracting because 64 Because there's already 100 in the, there's already 100 in the square. Now the only problem is to figure out how much is 100 minus 64. Why don't you check with the calculator while I do it on the board? <coughs> and who has another way of explaining it? Well, I got 36 and because there's like four sides and then so four times, four times 10 on each side. Just say there's 10, so there would be 40 and then you take off four because of, cause two of them, because two sides don't have, don't have the corners because the other two already took the corners. So it's 40 minus 4. 36. So what Fee did was 10 times 4 is 40 for all four sides, but then he subtracted the four corners, so he didn't count them twice and got 36. So this is Fee's method. Each method gave us 36, but three different ways to use arithmetic to solve a geometry problem. Anybody think of another way to do it? There's 36, and there's 8 on each side plus the corner, so you, 4 times 8 is 32 plus 4. Where did you get eight on each side? I thought there were ten on each side. No, but you don't want to count the corners because the corners overlap. After testing their methods on a five by five grid, I showed the class a larger grid. I didn't tell them how many squares on a side, but asked them to tell me how they would figure out how many squares in its border. Fee explains that he would count the squares in the top, multiply by four, and then subtract four for the corners. His verbal explanation is a bridge to writing the method as an algebraic formula. Suppose I said that S is the number of squares on the side. <coughs> because in algebra, you don't always know. Whatever that number S is, if I know it, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to multiply the S times 4. And that's what Fee told me. And then I'm going to subtract 4. And that's going to tell me how many squares are around the border. Working in pairs, the students write descriptions of the other methods in words, and in formulas. This gives the students experience translating arithmetic methods into algebra. You would get, this, get the one side, subtract two times, times, times itself, times, um, okay, um, okay, so, okay, you would put, um, and then add the, um, add eight plus eight to, for the sides. Okay, so that'd be five plus five. Plus ten plus okay, okay. plus five yes. is fifteen minus two. Oh wait, no, no, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Teaching is hard, and teaching in middle school is especially hard. You've got students coming in with only three minutes between periods. You're seeing 125 to 150 students a day. You're teaching a lesson. Sometimes you know the kids are getting bored. You can tell they're not understanding. The job is very, very difficult. What I need to do is to be able to be sure that I have many, many different options for teaching so I don't get locked into me standing and explaining and the children doing, but find many different ways to try over and over again to meet their needs. That's what the challenge of teaching is.